post the colors. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Order! I think we all have our own visions and memories of that day. One of mine that I never ever forget is the sight of the firefighters and police officers and all the first responders heading up the stairs uh, of the World Trade Center, not realizing that before long that building would come crashing down on top of them. But they were going up while everyone else was coming down. The death toll continues to mount today. We think of this as an event of 17 years ago, uh, but it's still a very living event. And folks today are continuing to pay the price for their service on that date. Firefighters and other first responders suffering with cancers and respiratory diseases because of the air that they were exposed to, not just that day, but over several weeks of recovery efforts that followed. And I think it's a reminder uh, that to us, Chief Williams, Chief Crowley, and myself, I think it's a reminder to us that we bear no greater responsibility uh, than to do everything we can to make sure that the men and women who serve under us return home at the end of each and every shift and to make sure that we have the best possible equipment for them and adequate staffing and that we're doing everything we can to ensure their safety because they're ensuring ours 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's just about 8.46, the exact moment uh, that flight number 11 crashed into the North Tower. So at this moment, I'd just like to ask everyone to please observe a moment of silence.
Thank you. And isn't it fitting that we hear sirens in the background uh, for those who are serving and protecting us as we speak, as we uh, conduct this ceremony? I think recent events certainly remind us of the risk and sacrifice that all of our first responders take every day that they report for duty. The murders of Sergeant Gannon and Sergeant Chesna uh, just recently, I think, really hit home as to just how at risk our first responders are when they go to work. And as I think about the events of 9-11, I've always believed that the city of Brockton, that, that the events of 9-11 even struck closer to home with us here in Brockton uh, as we have never forgotten March 10th, 1941, when the Strand Theater collapsed on our firefighters and the, the deaths and injuries that were suffered on that date uh, that our city has never forgotten and a sacrifice that our city has remembered and I think really puts us in a somewhat unique position to feel the closeness and the pain of the events and the losses of 9-11. At this time I'd like us to have an opportunity to hear from both our um, our police chief and our fire chief so I'll invite up uh, Brockton Chief of Police John Crowley for remarks. Good morning. Good morning, Chief. Let me give, begin by recognizing the loss of life on the morning of September 11, 2001. The years have passed, but the memories still linger. 9-11 has become a day of recognition for police, fire, and EMS first responders. But let us not forget the tragic loss of life on that day. Thank all of you for the job you do. Be safe and may God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. And uh, at this time, we'll invite uh, the Chief of the Brockton Fire Department, Michael Williams, up to the podium. Good morning. Good morning, Chief. Over this past weekend, I sat down to write down a few words to, to present this morning. And I realized that even after 17 years, the emotions of this day still affect me. The thought of these terrorist attacks and what it did to so many people saddens me. The senseless loss of life is truly heartbreaking. The 343 New York City firefighters, the 71 New York City and Port Authority police officers, and the nearly 3,000 civilians that perished that day still, like so many, angers me. The families that were left behind to grieve, the police and fire departments, the EMS community, we all felt and still feel such a sense of loss. We gather at this ceremony each year to remember and pay respect to all of them. And each year it doesn't get any easier. Each year the sadness is still there. The thoughts and memories of what happened on that day come rushing back. The death and pain of so many, the physical and mental battles that so many people still endure, it all comes back to us on this day. So as we gather, I believe we should try and remember the good of that day, the hundreds of thousands of lives that were saved and the heroes that saved them. It was not just first responders, it was doctors, nurses, and everyday human beings that answered the call and saved so many. It was the heroes on Flight 93. They took over the hijackers and brought their plane down in a Pennsylvania field, most likely saving hundreds of more lives on the ground. It was people banding together in the face of tragedy and helping one another, caring for their fellow man because it was the right thing to do. It was the workers who never gave up hope in finding survivors on that rubble pile. It's the men and women of our military 
who protect us, keep us safe, and stay vigilant so that something like this never happens again. These are the things that I'm going to try and focus on today, the good and not the sad. I would hope that you all join me and keep everyone in your thoughts and prayers. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. So let us never forget, never forget the sacrifices that were made on that date, never forget those who continue to suffer today. And we ask God bless, we ask God to bless those who were lost on 9-11. God bless all of their loved ones. God bless our city and those who continue to protect us. And God bless America. We'll ask the two chiefs uh, to accompany me in laying the wreath at the flag at the, at the rear of the hall and then uh, post 1046 VFW will uh, perform taps while the wreath is being laid and then uh, we will ask the uh, Brockton firefighters pipes and drums to conclude our ceremony once the wreath is in place. So Chief and Chief, let's bring the wreath.